Shalom, my friends, and welcome back to the channel. I am Jonathan, the Code Searcher, <clears throat> and I've been out for a few weeks. I had surgery and have not been able to do videos, um, so here I am. I am back, and I want to thank the person who sent me this, um, Kathy Stroop Herman. I did get your gift. Thank you, and uh, it's a very nice card she sent me. Bidding me to get well, and I'm still on the mend. Uh, I did have a number of requests, and I passed this on to the students, for Yeshua codes. And, you know, here lately I've been feeling kind of down um, in the dumps, and I've figured, you know, it's such a blessing to, to see these Yeshua codes. Because for me, these are the codes that prove that the Bible codes are real. There is, you know, recently I had to address a PhD who made an off-base comment about um, codes being subjective. You can make them say what they want to say and yada, yada, yada. Folks, I've been in these codes for thousands of hours. And I'm convinced that he has a purpose behind it. The most common um, thing that I hear among people about codes is, well, they're not reliable to predict the future. Um, first of all, that is not the primary reason why we have the codes. You have to get that out of your head. If, if, if for you, the codes are not real because you cannot predict the future, there's something wrong with your line of thinking. Okay? This is more along the molecular line of the, of the scriptures, like looking at your DNA and the structure behind it. There's precision. There's mathematics involved. It is not subjective. I cannot make it say what I want it to say. It is either there or it's not there. What we have come to learn through these Yeshua codes is how to, to reconcile what the plain text scripture is saying. And that is the reason why we have over 63,000 Christian denominations because of the division on interpretation of the scriptures. Now, I'm, I will admit that I may have been off on my interpretation of predictive codes. Siding Spring is a very famous one. The code clearly said collision. I said deep impact. I was telling everybody it's going to be a deep impact. That is not what happened. There was a collision with the atmospheres. So the code remained true. But my interpretation of it was not there. But when we're, when we're looking at things that are known, we know about the story of our Messiah. We know the facts behind it. And looking at how these, these tables and these ELS terms fall together tell us a, a, an underlying story, a, 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 another witness, if you will, to the plain text. So I want to show you some hand-picked, and I, I just picked you know, a handful of Yeshua codes that are already annotated. Uh, I did not do the annotation, and, and some of it is not exactly correct. As f For instance, he has here Yeshua. That is not what it says there. It says Avimelech, which is, my father is king. This particular access term was found by Rabbi Gladerson. I expound upon it a little further, because he found the son of David will come. And so I quickly found the name of Yeshua right under there. The Savior, um, of course, we found Yeshua is there as well. Uh, but here's something really interesting. We've got Nazarene and a abacus effect of Ben Yahweh or Ben Yahua, the son, literally, the son of Elohim. It's not there normally. That is, that is the abacus effect, okay? But for the sake of this code and the context of this code, it fits with precision. You see there with a netzerim, or netzri. Uh, he was crucified. Runs across the top like a banner. And then, of course, uh, the the name Yeshua appears in the plain text. Uh, another example would be this uh, uh, Yeshua of Nazareth. Again, I did not annotate this. Uh, it has some really interesting effects on this particular table. We've got, uh, in all these little gray areas here, is the king. Because, for the most part, 
the, the beef of this is found in the book of Ezra. Um, excuse me. Um, Esther. Uh, and there is the mention of the king in several places, as you can see there. And that's the effect we get. But here in this particular area, it makes a circle where the name Yeshua is. It's almost like a, a diamond ring, if you will. And running through the name Yeshua is Savior. And that, that's not an accident. It just, just came together. Yeshua of Nazareth, uh, the Savior, running through his name. And by the way, his name is there several times, as you can see there. Uh, the son of Elohim, uh, royalty, uh, an abacus effect here. This is not what it says uh, in the plain text, but you could read it this way because the, the words, uh, the way they're put together, and that is the sinless king, Matzot Hamelech. The sinless king, it does fit with Yeshua of Nazareth. Um, this is one of my favorites. This is the resurrection of Yeshua in Genesis. Uh, this is found at a skip of 123, and it's found in the, in the 33rd, excuse me, 31, 32, and 33 Genesis. And this is what, it, what we got here. Uh, this is streamed down. So let me just be clear on a more uh, filled uh, table of this or more searched table on there. I did find all of the disciples. Uh, and several other details in here, but this is a scaled back for the sake of, you know, being legible. And you can actually see the words. Uh, it's scaled back. We've got Yeshua as a banner connecting with Elohim. Uh, we have the Savior and a um, the Redeemer of the hour. Uh, the resurrection as a banner up at the top. And then, of course, the access term in the purple there, which is the resurrection of Yeshua. Uh, and then we have in the plain text, my sacrifice. Look at this, my sacrifice. And with that mem right there is the same word, my sacrifice. That is stacked on top of the resurrection. And then we have uh, some conjunction of several terms here. We've got Mashiach. And then you see this blue letter term here which is equivalent to grace or found favor, uh, but it connects with the face of El, uh, Penuel. Uh, and then El down at the bottom. Then we've got atonement lamb comes together. In the plain text, he rose up early, and he did for the resurrection. He was crucified. And again, this is found in a very small area in Genesis. You telling me this is an accident? This is subjective. Uh, also, there's a blood moon here. I don't under understand why that is, other than then there was a series of blood moons when I found this table. Um, but I, I did find blood moons uh, in there, in that black there. I just realized that was there. Here's another one that's one of my favorite. Yeshua is my name. Now, Yeshua is my name is found in several places, uh, and many times. There are scripture that is dealing with the exact person in question, the Savior, the Mashiach. And he identifies himself in the code as Yeshua is my name. That, that's the answer to the, the, you know, the unknown here in, in some respects. Who he's talking about uh, Yahuwah Elohim, the Holy One of Israel. You know, we can be subjective, but we know the answer to that, right? That's Yeshua. Just so happens his name fits with it. He was crucified. So here we have uh, Yuhu Elohim, uh, the Holy One of Israel, and he was crucified. Comes together. Uh, Lewis has here is the, the Lord God, but it's Yuhu Elohim arose. In the plain text, uh, the atonement, the Nazarene. Let's see here, we've got Netzlav, that's also uh, crucified, Yeshua. Uh, and then we have the Mashiach, connecting with the Yod and Shmi. You see there, the Mashiach. Uh, and then uh, we've got Kiani, Yehua, Elohim, Kodesh, Israel, uh, Mishu, which is, uh, my name is Yehua, Elohim, the Holy One, of Israel, the Savior. It goes right across the shin in uh, my name. 
um, the Holy One up at the top. And then we also have got the atonement in several places here with uh, also the word Savior that runs there. So again, this is Yeshua is my name, very small area um, in the prophets. And then we've got Yeshua is a lamb. <clears throat> this is a really interesting one as well. Um, Shiok running across the top. So Yeshua is the lamb. Uh, and then uh, my name is Yahuwah is uh, running right through there. Concealed. You can see uh, this is has been concealed. Uh, his sacrifice is here. Crucified. So we got the name Yeshua and crucified comes together with uh, the Goel, which is the Redeemer. You see that in the green. And then, of course, the word for my sacrifice was found in the Yeshua is resurrection table. Uh, and then the word said is right there. Uh, then I want to take you to a couple of current ones that I'm working on. Like this one, like this is, uh, behold, uh, the name Yeshua or the name of salvation is another way you could read that because Yeshua means salvation. So this is something that I'm, you know, currently working on, um, very long term. Again, corresponding ELS terms. And let's just let's be really clear what we're looking at here. All of these scriptures, okay, that are going in this direction they're running in this direction going around a spiral so if we imagine this mason jar as a spiral the scripture is going around like a spiral and we are seeing just a small window in this matrix right here in this matrix you are only seeing a small window to a cylinder of the entire scriptures over 30,000 chapter and verses okay Somewhere along that, I don't know the exact number. But they're going around the cylinder. And what we see in this matrix right here is just a window of a bigger cylinder. So the scriptures that are running through any given table has nothing to do with me. I didn't choose them. I didn't put them there. The Father decides what size cylinder these codes are on. I typed in a sequential um, sequential order of letters that actually is a phrase you need to pull phrases from the scripture or out of headlines your name if it's there at all um, it will be in a particular cylinder width that I have nothing to do with I didn't choose the cylinder width so again this is where the PhD was suggesting that the code searchers can uh, you know choose all these uh, parameters and these um, these variables that, that we do not have control over. It is either there or it is not there. And when we find something that is there and we find relative terms on top of that, for instance, behold, Yeshua or uh, the name of salvation. Here with the Mashiach, you see in the blue, sharing that Yod. So the, the Mashiach is like a pair of scissors coming together. Crossing on the yod there. Um, he was crucified. In this verse right here, I think that you will find very fascinating. And by the way, you could probably go down, and, and I did, from the top of this on down. Uh, virtually every chapter or verse has something to do with the Messiah. I chose a couple that were more interesting to me. Uh, for the sake of time, we're not going to go through all of them. Uh, but like I said, the Father chose which chapters, which verses come through this table. I had nothing to do with that. So just to be really clear, um, I didn't put it there. Uh, Mashiach in the plain text here, right with the, 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 uh, the word son of Jesse. Uh, also, look at this. He was crucified or, or crucified the word, the bar. How about that? that comes together four times was the day of Yahuwah, which is that great and terrible day. And incidentally, most of these chapters and verses has a, do, a lot to do with the judgment that is coming when the Messiah comes back. All right, but for the sake of time, I'm only going to read the, the yellow and the white uh, to you. That were my favorite 
We may look at one more that, that has a connection to the Mashiach down there, Psalm 91. Stay tuned for that. So we can see um, in Isaiah 49, we read this. Let me start just from one. Listen, O isles, unto me, and hearken, ye people, from afar off. You who hath called me from the womb, from the bowels of my mother, and hath made mention of my name. He hath made my mouth like a sharp sword, and the shadow of his hand he hath hid me, and made me a polished shaft. In his quiver he hath hidden me. And he said unto me, Thou art my servant, O Israel, in whom I am glorified. And then he said, I have labored in vain, I have spent my strength for naught, and in vain surely my judgment is with Yahuwah, and my work is with my Elohim. And now saith Yahuwah that formed me in the womb to be his servant, to bring Jacob to him, though Israel not be gathered. You hear that? Yet shall I be glorious in the eyes of Yahuwah, and my Elohim shall be my strength. Now some believe um, that this is referring to Yeshua in this next verse. And he said, Is it a light thing that thou should be my servant, to raise up the tribes of Jacob? and to restore the preserved of Israel. I will also give thee for a light unto the Gentiles, that thou mayest be my salvation. That is the name Yeshua in the plain text. And we can see that, that in here, he is crucified. That word is encoded in Isaiah, that he is crucified. Who are we talking about? Jacob was crucified? No. Who's descended from Jacob? You are all, if you're a part of Israel, you are all referred to as Jacob or Ephraim. Do you understand that? So in the sense of this, the Messiah is also being referred to as Jacob. He is my salvation unto the end of the earth. Thus saith Yahuwah, the Redeemer of Israel, and His Holy One, to him who man despises. Who is that? Who is that? Tell me. To him the nation abhorred. A servant of rulers, the king shall see and arise, princes shall worship because of you, that is faithful, and the Holy One of Israel. And he, has, he shall choose thee. It's very cryptic. But you can decipher what is going on there. Let's skip on down to another one that's very um, awesome, I believe, because this is the second coming of the, of the Messiah. Okay, so it culminates. There's a story being told between this top line and this one. But for, like I said, for the sake of time, because I know I'll lose many of you by the end of this, I'm going to fast forward to the good part where Yeshua actually returns. And this is what it says. You can find this in Zechariah, the 14th chapter. And let's just start from the beginning. I want you to get the context of what's going on here. Behold, the day of Yahuwah cometh. And thy spoil shall be divided in the midst of thee. For I will gather all nations against Jerusalem to battle. And the city shall be taken. And the horses rifled. And by the way, uh, Ezekiel 40, uh, 38 happens right here. This is the battle of Gog and Magog. You see this line here? This is Gog and Magog. Okay? So after that event, the Messiah does come. Why? Because... All of these nations come up to Jerusalem for battle. It's a continuation, right? But the Savior comes and stops it. And look, look what happens. The city shall be taken. The house is rifled. And the woman ravished. Half the city shall go forth into captivity. And the residue of thy people shall not be cut off from the city. Then shall Yahuwah go forth and fight those nations as when he fought in the day of battle. And his feet, who is this? Tell me who this is. And his feet shall be upon the Mount of Olives, which is before Jerusalem. He said he's coming back the same way he left. And that was on the Mount of Olives. Except this time when he comes back, he's going to split it in two. How do I know that? Because it's prophesied right here. We're talking about, behold the name of salvation. Yeshua. The very one who's going to split this mountain. You see how these, this comes together? I didn't put that verse there. The Most High did. 
and his feet shall stand upon the Mount of Olives, which is before Jerusalem on the east. And on the Mount of Olives shall cleave the midst, therefore, toward the east and toward the west. And there shall be a great valley. Half of the mountain shall be moved to the north, and half of it to the south. And ye shall flee to the valley of the mountains. And for the valley of the mountains shall reach unto Azel. Yea, ye shall flee, as like ye fled from before the earthquakes in the days of King uh, Uzziah, the king of Judah. For Yahuwah my Elohim shall come, and all the saints with thee. That's the second coming. You understand that? Uh, then it goes into the Psalms. There are really cool Psalms here. But uh, like I said, we're, we're going to spare you the time. I'm going to take you to Psalm 91, where we find the word Mashiach encoded in Psalm 91. Well, the, the very last of Psalm 90 and then into Psalm 91. Uh, you, just to remind you of what that says. Um, and we'll back up to Psalm 90. And let the beauty of Yahuwah appear upon us. And, and establish the work of our hands upon us. Yea, the work of our hand establish thou it. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide upon the shadow of the Almighty. And I will say of Yahuwah, He is my refuge and my fortress, my Elohim, and, who, and Him will I trust. The word Mashiach is encoded there. Uh, and then, where was this? This was also Psalms 119. And 105, the word is a lamp unto my feet, a light unto my path. Who's the word? Where we got here, the word is crucified. John told you who the word it was, right? And I think there's something in that one there with the son of Jesse, which is Psalm 31, verse 10. Have mercy upon me, O Yahuwah, for I am in trouble. My eye has consumed with great my soul and my belly. For my life is spent with grief, and my years and my sight and my strength fail because of mine iniquity. This is uh, David writing here. With this, it's got the son of Jesse, which that is Yeshua. He is from the son uh, the lineage of Jesse, from David. All right, all right. So that is one, another Yeshua code. Here's another that's. One of the most famous. This was found by Yaakov Ramsel in one chapter of of Isaiah fifty three. We find again Yeshua is my name, and all the relevant terms that fall together. You see how this cannot be an accident. This is not subjective. I didn't put this here, even though it was suggested by yet another PhD that Chuck Missler. Yaakov Ramsel and Grant Jeffries cut and paste and made this code by forging it. And yes, a, a PhD, a theologian, accused these men of doing this. And it's preposterous. It is the most insane thing I've ever heard. Because it, no matter what code program you got, you can find this in Isaiah 53. Let's just be real clear. You don't even need a code program. If you got the Hebrew, you can find this. You put that width, that cylinder width, as, as a 20. You see this very huge margin here. We're only dealing with one chapter. That's why we have very few letters. And the fact that you can find all the details that you can, over 1,600 code uh, ELS terms in this one chapter. But for, for the sake of legibility, it's very scaled down. I'll share with you a few uh, very interesting anomalies like the Mashiach crosses over my name is Yeshua. Okay, so this happened at Pesach. You you know the story of Isaiah 53, right? The suffering servant, he was crucified. He's the one who was pierced. This happened at Pesach. Uh, we have uh, Nitzlav, which is crucified. Uh, we've got Peter. James and John and Mary. Matter of fact, you can see in the black letters, those three letters there are Mary. But in the hot pink, you've got another term, which is death. So literally, you have the death and Mary at the side of Yeshua. I find that really fascinating that right next to Yeshua is death 
and Mary, the, the very the very ones that were there that never left his side. It reminds me of a scene in the Passion of the Christ where Yeshua is carrying the cross and death holding the baby is right there at his side the whole time, right? Uh, the lamb sits right on top of this. Uh, we have Rome running right through the name John. Uh, and again, this is Isaiah 53. If you have never read Isaiah 53, I would encourage you to read this. And we'll end on that. How about that? How about we read the greatest code vine I think I've ever, ever found. This is Yaakov Ramsel. Found Yeshua is my name in Isaiah 53. Who hath believed our report? And to whom the arm of Yahuwah revealed? For he shall grow up before them as a tender plant, a root out of dry ground. That's a nut, sir. Where the term Nazarene comes from. He hath no form, no comeliness. And when we shall see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. He was despised and rejected of men, of man of sorrows. Matter of fact, that's a search term. You can find that encoded, a man of sorrows. It leads you back to Yeshua. That term, which comes out of Scripture, will unequivocally come back as Yeshua. Hands down. This is why we know the codes are true. And how that we can reconcile the plain text. What is saying on the surface? You can drill down. On it. A man of sorrow, acquainted with grief. And we hid, as it were, our faces from him. And he was despised, and we deceived him not. Surely he hath borne our griefs, and carried our sorrows. Yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of Elohim, and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. We are all like sheep gone astray. And we've turned everyone his own way. And Yahuwah had laid on him the iniquity of his all. He was oppressed and he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. He is brought as a lamb to the slaughter. I hope you're, you're being blessed by this. He was brought as a lamb to the slaughter. And as a sheep before the shears is dumb, he opened not his mouth. He was taken from prison and from judgment. And all who declared this generation. For he was cut off out of the land of the living. For the transgression of my people he was stricken. And he made his grave with the wicked. And with the rich in his death. Because he had done no violence. Neither was there any deceit in his mouth. He was an innocent lamb. That's why he's referred to as a lamb. Yet it pleased Yahuwah to bruise him, and hath put him to grief. Then thou shalt make his soul an offering for sin. Folks, this is a direct connection. It will lead you right to what the atonement is. His soul was an offering for sin. And he shall see his seed, and he shall prolong his days, and it, the pleasure of Yahuwah shall prosper in his hand. And he shall see the travail of his soul, and shall be satisfied. And by his knowledge and, uh, shall my righteous servant justify many, for he bear their iniquities. Therefore will I divide him a portion with the great, and he shall divide the spoil with the strong. Because he hath poured out his soul even unto death, and he was numbered with the transgressors, and he bare the sin of many, and made intercession for the transgressors. That's you and me, if you didn't know. All of that detail in one chapter, encoded, is not an accident. It is not subjective. It is not something I put there. It is not something that Dr. Missler put there or Yaakov Ramsel 
or Grant Jeffrey as they were accused of. The Father put this here. And He hid it for you, not from you. Do you understand that? These codes are in here for a reason. It is not for our pleasure, for His glory. He did not enable you to predict the future. And the fact that some of you theologians cast out the codes because they're not accurate for prediction shows where your heart is. Witchcraft. By the way, this is not. Those of you that call this evil have no idea what you're talking about. And I would implore those of you that have PhD and feel compelled to come against the codes, though you have done no research, and I don't mean Googling it, I mean getting a code program and actually proving code searcher wrong, he will confound you. I guarantee it. I will even give you a, an opportunity to take my course. I will teach you how to use these codes, how to use the code program. You have to provide the Holy Spirit. But that's my offer to you. You know who you are. Anybody else that want to take the code program class, Hebrew course, please do. We have more you know, space available. We would love to have you as a student. Please go to thecodesearcher.com forward slash apply if you would like to apply. Anybody can do it. Are you called to be a code searcher? Go and apply. Don't waste any time. Just do it. You can afford it. If you can, I'll, I'll make it where you can. We're not trying to get rich here. I need other witnesses. I can't be the only one. Chris Ray cannot be the only one. I posted a video today of an Orthodox Jew doing Yeshua codes in Jerusalem. It's unheard of. His name is Ariel Cohen. Very peculiar, interesting Orthodox Jew. But he knows who Yeshua is. And I would surmise he probably, well, I would guarantee it because he said so. It was the codes that led him to that. That's powerful. And for you theologians to throw this under the bus and say it's nothing, there's nothing to it, it's subjective, God don't hide anything, it shows how ignorant you are. How do you have a Ph.D.? You can do this. You want to search code? Go to thecodesearcher.com forward slash apply. Talk to me on the phone. We'll get you enrolled. We'll get you searching codes and learning Hebrew. That's the first thing you're going to do is learn Hebrew. You can't search the codes unless you learn Hebrew. And we're going to teach you a little a basic foundation of biblical Hebrew. In other words, you're going to be learning to read your scriptures as you're learning Hebrew. You can't beat that. Go to the, the codesearcher.com forward slash apply, please, and apply for the school. If you'd like to bless this ministry, please use the link down below. We could sure use your help. Uh, I want to say a blessing to you. I hope these codes blessed you and encouraged you and edified you. Uh, I could have gone on all night long on Yeshua codes. This is, I believe, the place to sharpen your skills is these kind of codes. This is how you get accurate. Right here. I can prove a hundred ways from Sunday who the Messiah is. It's all here. Or any other subject you want to debate. Preacher of rapture. Whatever. Who the two witnesses are. Anything. It's encoded. I hope this video blessed you. Shalom. I'm on the mend. Thank you for your prayers. Thank you for your gifts. Uh, we really appreciate you. May you will bless you.